Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman of the Football History Dude Podcast, and I'm stopping by this show real quick to tell you about a couple of cool giveaways that we have going on here at the network. Both are autographed books covering various topics of the NFL. The first is The Point After, How One Resilient Kicker Learned There Is More to Life Than the NFL by ex-NFL kicker Sean Conley. It goes over his unique experience as a walk-on kicker at the University of Pitt after never playing high school football. And then it gets into some of his time playing for NFL teams and so much more beyond the gridiron. The other is from author Kevin Bryant. His book is titled Spies on the Sidelines, the High Stakes World of NFL Espionage. This book started as a curiosity, kind of a passion project to understand everything revolving around well, Spygate. But this put Kevin down a rabbit hole learning about all sorts of espionage that has occurred throughout the history of the NFL. Both permissible <laughs> and often the illicit techniques of gathering intel to try to impact the outcome of the game. To sign up for your chance to win an autographed copy of one of these books, all you gotta do is head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways and sign up. That's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways. Again, check out all the other podcasts that we have in the Sports History Network as well. But now, back to your regularly scheduled journey to the Sports History Timeline. Now it's time to take a sports break, a look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great and sports history and talking about the individuals in sports for the sports break of July 30th, all the great events that have happened and the players that did them. And if they have their uniform numbers, we give you those too. Our numbers that we're going to be talking about today are 41, 47, 33, 44, 10, 4, 11, 24, 22, 31, and the number 18 on the back of a jersey number. July 30th, 1937 is where we'll start. Philadelphia Phillies' Dolph Camilli played first base, and in that game, he did not register any putouts for the entire game. Dolph would wear the number 41 in just a few short years uh, from then on because uh, he didn't wear it in exactly in 37, but uh, 41 came thereafter. And not a single putout at first base for the Philadelphia Phillies in that game. But July 30th, 1947, Cincinnati Reds pitcher Ewell Blackwell, number 47, had his record-breaking 16-game winning streak end as his team, the Reds, lost to the New York Giants 5-4 in that contest. It was a close one, though. July 30th, 1954, Bob Kennedy, who wore number 33 that year, hit the first Grand Slam up for the new Baltimore Orioles franchise. The new version of the Orioles started operations in 1954 when the St. Louis Browns moved to Baltimore and assumed the name vacated in the early 20th century when the original Orioles folded and were moved to New York to become the Highlanders. We talked about that just about a month ago when the, the, the Orioles. Uh, July 30th, 1959, in his MLB debut, San Francisco Giants future baseball Hall of Fame first baseman wearing number 44, Willie McCovey, went four for four in a 7-2 victory over the Philadelphia Phillies at Seal Stadium. July 30th, 1966, in FIFA World Cup final action at Wembley Stadium in London, England, British striker Jeff Hurst, before the home crowd wearing the celebrated number 10 jersey, scored a hat-trick as England beat West Germany 4-2 after extra time was added to the contest. Jeff Hurst, number 10. FIFA World Club Soccer. July 30th, 1968, Washington Center shortstop Ron Hansen, number four, made the eighth unassisted triple play in Major League Baseball history and the first in 41 years as the Senators lost the game 10-1 to the Cleveland Indians. July 30th, 1969, Houston Astros, Dennis Mink, number 11, and Jim Wynn, wearing the number 24 on his uniform, each hit a Grand Slam home run in the ninth inning versus the New York Mets for the Houston Astros. July 30th, 1973, Texas Rangers, Jim Bibby, wearing number 22, no-hit the first place Oakland A's and supported a Rangers 6-0 victory. 
July 30th, 1988, Cincinnati Reds pitcher John Franco, wearing number 31, set a record of 13 saves in just a single one-month period. That's quite a bit. That's one every other day, and they don't even play every day. July 30th, 1991, Boston Red Sox Carlos Quintana, uh, number 18, was the 11th Major League Baseball player in history to reach six uh, runs batted in in a single inning. It was the third inning performance against the Texas Rangers in a Sox 11-6 victory. Most of the damage was done with a grand slam home run off of baseball legend pitcher Dennis Oil Cam Boyd. In July 30th, 1995, Richie Ashburn wearing number one and longtime number 20 Mike Schmidt were enshrined into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Now, just a, a great exhibit of some great ball players there in Cooperstown, just like the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio is, and uh, you know some of the other halls of fame that are around the world. Just uh, some tremendous ways to recognize these special players for whatever the, the halls of fame are recognizing, whatever sport. And uh, we celebrate all of them because there's some great athletes that we love to remember because they gave us such great entertainment and enjoyment to watch. Uh, even if they were for the op- opposing team, you still had to admire some of the great feats of athleticism these folks have displayed. And that's what we try to recognize each and every day here on the Sports Jersey Dispatch, along with their uniform number, just for some extra recognition and to be a little bit different. So, till tomorrow, everybody, have a great Sports History Day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout, and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. Get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster-sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where did you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website, where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) <laughs> Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delft discovered Clifford? the spondiferous magic of row one sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can, too, by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R-O-W number one today for access to the full row one catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act A for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at Check out and keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer, coming soon.